In the battle for the hearts and minds of our wayward youth, this is the front line. You will be mentally and physically tested. You need to think about it. Work hard. The day has only started. This lot are the latest batch of trainees in the LSV or Limited Service Volunteers Program, a program designed to get youth off the couch and into employment in just six weeks. The LSV program is a joint government program between the New Zealand Defence Force and the Ministry of Social Development. So it's a six week course uh, that's primarily aimed at 17 to 25 year olds to increase the number of young New Zealanders entering employment. The main thing about this is to, to get the rangatahi on, back on path. Some of them need re-motivation. Now if you think this is just a military camp for bad kids, it's not. All sorts wind up here. Yes, there's ex-crims, but there's also rich kids, and everyone in between. Most are unemployed, and all are looking for a sense of direction. I've always been a good kid. I just sort of became a bum, and that's how I got here, really, because I went on the benefit. I finished school, had, you know, had no goals, didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. Left, right, left, right. The biggest misconception of this course is all the kids are bad, they're not bad. When they leave, they are so much improved in themselves and everything, they just really love it. We achieve that through a six week residential course where we expose the trainees to a number of life skill modules, uh, to some adventure based learning and a lot of vocation sessions that really set the trainees up to find employment. Love, or more like tough love. On the command move. You will race off this bus. I don't want to see anyone walk, you will run. Is what's dished out to the trainees here from day one. No laughing, no joking around. Move! And if these guys had hearing problems before they arrived at base, here they have the miracle cure. You with the sunglasses on, get them off. For trainee Eddie Tapasu, this welcoming ceremony was a shock to the system. To be honest, I was scared. Eh? Uh, one of the staff came in, told us to 10 seconds to get out of the bus. I think to myself, what is this? <laughs> I just want to go back home. <laughs> they get off the bus, their attitude is, some of them is, is of defiance because they don't like being told what to do. Um, but by about the end of the first week, they, they, they learn I need to do what I'm told to do or I'm always going to be singled out and get extra jobs or whatever. Down to the last code there, ladies. Code closer to me, where you go, quickly. Think you'll be six weeks here means six weeks with no contact with the outside world. No cell phones, no TV, and for trainee to pass. Oh, it's going to feel good after this haircut, eh, bro? No more lovely locks. What were you thinking when they started cutting your hair? To be honest, I just want to smash the guy that was doing my hair. <laughs> <That> was... <laughs> no, sorry, stuff. I didn't mean that. We teach them personal grooming, dress standards. The boys get a number two haircut. Uh, the girls, they get to tie, tie their hair up. Grooming standards is quite important, and cleanliness, and brushing their teeth, cleaning themselves. For Sergeant Major Jock McCauley and the team at Youth Development North, it's a whole lot of small changes that start to make a big difference in the lives and attitudes of the trainees. The grooming, hygiene, time management and physical expectations of each day, making these guys more employable. We pretty much get them up every morning at 5.30 and we'll work them till 10 o'clock at night. Uh, first thing they do in the mornings, they do exercises. And what that does 
for the for the job prospects down the road is it shows they can stick to a routine. So we're hoping that by doing that, they can turn up to work every morning at eight o'clock and finish at five, just getting into a routine. Before then, uh, I've asked them who hasn't been up this early before unless they're coming home from a party or, or something like that. A lot of them, it's just a culture shock. Trainee Tapasu says before getting on the course, his grooming habits were a bit slack. I learned how to iron, how to polish his shoes. I learned heat from here. What Eddie and his platoon have also learnt is just what they're capable of when pushed to the limit. Topping 200 kilos when he arrived, the physical components of the course were always going to make things tough. I knew it was going to be hard. The thing is, I didn't think I, I would make through this way. Pick him up, pick him up, pick him up! But here, no one gets left behind and giving up is not an option. Oh, there's a lot of power and potoka from the, from the other platoon members and that's what this course, it bonds them all together. I mean, you just saw 13 people helping 200 kilograms over the top of a 12 foot wall. Eddie's hard work has paid off in more ways than one. In just six weeks, he shed a staggering 47 kilos. His efforts are nothing short of inspiring. To watch someone of his, of his stature, his build, do something like that. Ah, hurry up, you're almost there. It gives us inspiration and motivation to take it on. Oh, it's really hard, but you have to try your hard. It's like one of the stuff, our stuff to If you don't put your mind into it, don't let your mind beat you up. That's the one, The toughest day on the course for the trainees is aptly named the longest day. A day designed to work these guys like never before. This morning we've got them up at five o'clock. They had no idea what's happening. So early rising, they've been given some quick orders, quick dress change, and they're into doing teamwork. They're carrying logs around at the moment, and they're going to do that for about nine kilometres, about an hour and a half, just to fatigue them. And then we've got a series of tasks throughout the day just to test them mentally and physically. The rest of the day sees them running, pulling trucks, pushing trailers, pushing themselves as individuals and as a team. With everyone else on the ropes too, you, you, you realise that it is a team thing. You can't have anyone just not doing anything. As I referred earlier with team dynamics, you know, we all did it together and uh, moved as a team. And if all that wasn't enough, there's still hundreds of metres of thick mud to run through. Doesn't matter how big your quads are, you'll get so much mud into your boots. It's like you got cement in it, and just every lift is just another struggle. Two of the boys from my team, from our platoon, was helping me out a lot. But it was hard. I couldn't even move. <laughs> what got you through? I guess um, lean on me, <laughs> lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend, I'll help you carry on, for it won't be long, I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. That's all I can explain to you right now. Through all of these experiences, it's easy to see how trainees like Jerome Solomon can transform in just six weeks. You see, life before the LSV course was a rocky one, filled with drugs, alcohol and crime, a lifestyle that landed him in prison. Interestingly, he says, nine months inside didn't change him, but six weeks as a limited service volunteer has made him a new man. The attitudes I picked up in prison still made me a, it kind of it gave me a bit of a temper and it gave me, it just never made me correct. You don't really see much positive people inside, but coming here, 
seriously have taken its toll on me and for the good. It may start off with just doing, getting up early and, but there's a secret message along with this. It's something that they're slowly putting in good attitude into you without even knowing this. They're, this getting up early stuff, this polishing boots and taking and ironing stuff is showing you to take pride in your, not only in your appearance, but pride in yourself. And it's pride and a newfound sense of confidence that's clearly on display come graduation day. Look, these young men and women are awe-inspiring, I tell you. Uh, you meet them and their journeys to this have uh, sometimes been a bit tough and sometimes uh, been some quite tragedy in some of their backgrounds and that sort of thing. And they get here and that sense of self-respect um, and that pride in themselves and what they can do is just amazing. We had a, a trainee who um, had been away um, inside for a couple of years and, um, you know, sort of lost his way, um, was at one of our working income sites, I heard about the program, so he signed up and, um, you know, he came out with their top platoon or, um, award for that course, um, you know, and with the motivation and the confidence that um, he, he learnt uh, from the program, uh, he got out there and he got his own job, you know, full time um, in the tree landscaping uh, role. It's also a chance for the trainees to show off their new skills to their whanau. And a time to reflect on just how far they've come. For going back home, I'm not going to go back and do the same thing. I have to take this stuff here over there. Awards are handed out to the top performing trainees. Among them, trainee Solomon. I've, I've got something to maintain now with this trophy and stuff, so no, I can't let my standards slip. And, and if I do, it's just letting all my staff, section commanders, my platoon commander, staff groups down, so it's, it's not an option. I'd really encourage someone to undertake the course because it is successful and it does achieve its aim of getting people into employment. We challenge the trainees, um, we push them outside their comfort zone and throughout the six weeks they really grow in ways that they never would have dreamed of. Um, and at the end of it, they do find work. The programme is working. Before they know it, it's time to go home. Hopefully, better versions of themselves. <laughs>